Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're out at Boggle Hole. Well, technically Stroop Beck, we skipped the Boggle Hole section because the tide is still a long way in. Uh, and this allows us to get around a little earlier uh, towards the bottom sections towards Raven's Car. Uh, so the reason we're here is you do occasionally get some rare ammonites washing out of the exposed uh, rock beds uh, that show up in Robin Hood's Bay, particularly at low tide. And they sometimes wash out, particularly in the storms. Uh, we've had some pretty big tides this week. Uh, but also the Easter holidays have just happened, so there may not be that much. We'll just have to see. Uh, I've only been here once before on the channel, that was in the summer, uh, so there's no guarantee we'll find an awful lot. Only found a few ammonites that day. Uh, but if nothing else, it's a glorious day, as you can tell, and a chance to get out and about. Uh, this is the scenery. It's, it's really tough to argue with. And in the distance, my wife and dog uh, enjoying it as well. And so I'll be back with you when we've got something to show off. You get these interesting marks sometimes, and these are fossil corals that show up. Uh, these tend to be much older in age. So this is Carboniferous uh, and stuff that has washed uh, down with the glaciers over the last ice ages. And there's still a lot of water coming off the cliffs, even if the weather has improved. Uh, so just be very aware of it as you're walking around. And the first indications of ammonites uh, there might be a couple in here, uh, but the block is hmm, a bit a bit uncertain. Uh, so I'm going to just take it as is at the minute. I might see if I can split along that line later. Uh, but as it's the first ammonites here of the day, and possibly the only ones, we're just going to take them as is for the minute. And hopefully you can all see that fossil. Uh, that there is a devil's toenail, also known as a gryphia. And so you get the one big shell going around, uh, and on top of that sits uh, a valve, a sort of a shell that closes the top of the animal when it lived in this. Uh, called devil's toenails because in the old days they thought it kind of had that sort of shape if you were to imagine like a goatee devil like toenail. Sure, if you sort of squint, but there's some fun fun beliefs about some of the fossils. So, there you go. Uh, as we started to hit some of the exposed actual bedrock, a uh, good time to point out that uh, all of Robin Hood's Bay uh, all of the bedrock is triple SI protected, so you should not be hammering into it. Uh, but there is definitely evidence of some of the ammonites here. Uh, bits of pyrite preserved with, a, <laughs> with this little spider running across it. Another little chunk of uh, an ammonite there. So the loose block's fine to collect from, and we'll keep an eye out if there's anything nice in any of those. Likewise with any of the nodules, the same as the rest of the coast. You do occasionally get some really big chunks of ammonite. Uh, around um, but sadly just a little bit even though it's got some lovely sutures it's going to just stay behind looking for something far more complete than this just pointed out to my wife that she wasn't finding very many so she gets 30 seconds and then finds all of these so uh, clearly I need to get her working on it more but she's busy looking for some driftwood to take home uh, what was quite a nice ammonite it looks like once upon a time in situ uh, whether the middle was ever there I don't know uh, but it's long been battered by either the sea or someone uh, hacking at it. Uh, so we will leave it there for others to enjoy. Uh, clearly a little hot spot for all these partials. Another nice chunk of ammonite. Nothing particularly exciting about it for me to take it home or want to take it home. So it'll stay here for someone else to enjoy down the line. There's lots of burrows running through this rock here. And... Uh, some other little bits and pieces knocking around. It's a little DAC piece. Uh, but still nothing spectacular. Not just beautiful fossil ammonites you get here, but uh, there are some gorgeous, gorgeous shells you can find around as well. Some big old bivalves. Um, I want to say these are pinna shells, but I could be wrong on the name on them. I haven't had a lot of luck finding ammonites today, but I think we've got another one. This one could be a decent ish one. Just a bit of keel showing there. Not this thing, I think this is a bellamite fragment cone, but I think this is an ammonite. Uh, and I'm hopeful that will wrap around underneath. That'll uh, be a good size because it's been pretty sparse today. Uh, some other bits and pieces that I, I'm not quite sure what they are, so there's another thing sticking out there. I think that's just a bivalve looking at the curvature of it. Uh, but I'll just give that a quick tap and just check. 
So now the tide's out, I can start to show you some of these strata, these rock layers that are exposing. And Robin Hood's Bay is a bit of an outlier. The rocks that we're walking over are lower and middle layers, uh, and the rocks on either side towards Whitby and towards Ravenscar are upper layers, so they're younger. So we have a bit of an outlier of some old rocks sat between two sets of younger rocks. Uh, and what is believed to have happened is a dome of salt develops underneath the bay that is now Robin Hood's Bay, and it uplifts all of the rocks. And over time, as erosion happens, we lose the rocks that are on the top, the younger rocks in Robin Hood's Bay, and it exposes these middle and lower Lias rocks. And so this is why we have this unusual exposure, which then uh, the only other equivalent rocks appear up north towards Redcar and Skinning Grove. Uh, and so they instantly make these exposures rare for Yorkshire. Uh, and therefore anything you find, the ammonites that you find, tend to be unusual and the fact that they're actually all the different strata mean that they tend to be uh, an actually well defined layer that a lot of these ammonites are coming from. They're not coming from as many loose material or loose blocks. They're coming straight out of the bedrock in many instances or at least can be identified to which layer they're coming out of. So just finishing up here uh, at Boggle Hole and this is a youth hostel behind us. Uh, a good little pit stop if you ever need a place to get a drink and some food after a long day walking around. Um, but yeah, not so much on the fossils, but I never have an awful lot of success down here. Uh, if you do find something, chances are it's pretty rare, uh, or you're actually in the bedrock. Uh, and as that's protected, I'm not going to be doing it. So uh, we just have those sort of days. But lovely to be out on the beach with my wife and our dog, uh, and just exploring uh, and getting some time out. So thanks everyone for watching, and we'll catch you soon.